Hi, welcome back to Cambridge Inside Out. I'm Judy Nathan still. And I'm Robert Winters. <laughs> Nothing happened in those three minutes. That's right. No time travel. That's it, yeah. Where would so, you go back to if you could time travel? If I could time travel? <laughs> that's an awful good question. I, I caught the end of Peggy Sue Got Married the other day. Yeah. That was for, right for Coppola. I can't believe it. He did that movie. Really? Yeah. Yeah, if I could go back, actually, I would love to go back to some significant moments in history just to oh. Oh, listen. Oh, you're real before your time. You no, mean. I would love to hear oh. Abraham Lincoln speak. Oh, I would wow. love to, you mm. know, I, I would love to actually meet George Washington, you know. Wow. And, and I'm not just, just not just Americana, you know. Yeah. I'd, like, I'd love to meet some of these, these characters. So just wow, that's interesting. In I'm sorry I asked the question. I was yeah. just thinking of my own life. Line. You know, I'm, <laughs> That's just I'm, so funny. Actually, but, it's it's uh, yeah. just as a little aside. You know, yeah. one of my secret identities is that I'm oh. the publisher of the newsletter of the Middlesex Canal Association, oh, right. yes. which I mailed out this morning. Oh. Um, and when we go along, the Middlesex Canal ran from Sullivan Square, Charleston. It's actually named after the first president of the Middlesex Canal Corporation, up to Lowell, and wow. it was really the first serious canal in the country. In mm. fact, the engineers from the Erie Canal actually came here to learn how to make a canal. Interesting. But the thing is, is that when I walk along places like that, mm. I always along the towpaths because yeah, there's a lot called. of it's still in existence. Yeah. Um, I, I I put myself historically back oh, there, and I kind of imagine back. there being boats wow. being tugged along Aww. and whatever. So if I could actually do that, good for that you. That would just be the coolest. Good for that you. That would be so cool. So. I, all right, I'll have to think of my answer because I wasn't <laughs> thinking far enough back. I'm ah, sorry. Ah, you surprised I just, yourself with that I question, did, did surprise you? myself. Right, you really right. gave it, right. <laughs> as usual, very historical right. answer. So um, there were a few other things oh. I think of interest. Uh, that, that happened last night? Yeah, or, or city council orders from the previous week that right. actually either did or didn't get a detailed response. Right. One of the ones that I, I still find very interesting, and there was a little bit of news that I hadn't picked up on, so there was this property in Kendall Square called the, that was supposed oh, to be right. the site for what they called the Constellation Center. Mm -hmm. and there was a Constellation Center foundation established. For many and years, And they've basically right? been holding the property since, for, oh gosh, it's like close to 20 years, so maybe then, a little bit there, less. It was vacant? It's been vacant the whole time. How can they off. afford to do that? Well, the thing is that if it's vacant land, you pay taxes only on the vacant land. Oh, that's right. We had that whole discussion. Yeah, of and history. and if it was promised to be um, a Art cultural center, center yeah. I think the tax arrangement is a little bit different. I'm not sure exactly. Well, it never did materialize, right. so they should owe money. Right now, if you were <laughs> if you were just an investor who was mm. basically land banking, you mm. might have been treated a certain way. But this was supposed to be a community use. Uh, a yeah. performance, arts and performance center, hmm. never happened. Now, there's some people, of the, I, th I think maybe a little fairly or unfairly, but they, they feel that this was really just holding the property, waiting for the value to um, well, rise. Well, it's hard and then, not to see it that way, actually. It's well, except for the time. fact that if it was owned by a foundation, mm -hmm. then any money they make goes to the foundation, which well. has to then be used, if it was indeed a nonprofit, for the mission, you can't just pocket the money and run. What was the mission? It was basically to pr create an arts and performance center. Yeah, so, so what do they do with the pocketed money? They got to build an arts and performance center or something else that's in sync with the, the federal laws. But they charities. sold it to someone, didn't they? So the money, $50.5 million oh. to Biomed Realty, which is Ooh. basically already owns a lot of the property in oh that vicinity. Oh my gosh, they're not going to build an arts um, center, are they? Um, Actually, there's what makes it interesting. Okay. So the thing is, is that, um, and again, the folks of the East Cambridge planning team know this back and forth better yeah. than I ever will. But the thing is, is that, so this is something they've been waiting for for ages. And, yeah. And, and, you know, I think most people basically still believed that these were people of goodwill who really did intend to do it. They just didn't know how to pull it off. Hmm. Um, so the thing is, is that so now you've got a situation where they've got this money. Now, should they be spending it? There's, there's several things. Are they still obliged to take that money and use it for that purpose? Uh, in a related matter, when you've got um, Biomed Realty, are there some um, conditions on the property? Because this was, this was actually part of the Com Energy site that mm. turned into Watermark and you know, uh, some other properties all around down by Broad Canal area. Um, so I think that there are, there are strings attached, so that if you're now Biomed, 
uh, Realty, you can't just sort of build a big lab building. I think they're act they may be, and again, this is why this is an interesting order from the council, saying we want some history and some information about this. Wasn't that public knowledge? It whatever is the, public uh, record. Whatever the sale uh, requirements it, are? It, yes, or? and it, it's a public record, and in fact, there may have been conditions laid down um, as part of the special permit process. Right, but I'm just saying, isn't that time. information publicly available? It's available. So the thing is, it's a matter of putting it all in one oh, place. Oh, I see, and, and we're I mean, asking it, the city to do that? Well, or? better that the city should do it than right. just an interest group, because then right. they'll, they may slant it one way or the other. So what you need is an objective account. Yeah of what the obligations are and, uh, and what the flexibilities are. So for example, there may be certain uh, restrictions on height that were based on standards from 2003 or mm -hmm. whenever this was passed, uh, when it was the Com Energy site. Because uh, they basically, you could have transferred a lot of the height to the other buildings right. with the presumption it was gonna be like a three or four so, story performance So is this center. sale already closed? August 29th, done deal. Oh, so it's a done deal. Yeah. So, so now is Bioid Realty obligated to um, create a performance center, for example, hmm. within? I, and if I so, I suspect that it is not. And so maybe they'll just give the money I to the city to do something with. I suspect that it is, but why? Well, why? Why couldn't they just turn around and say, "Well, in lieu of us doing it, here's the money that would have been gone to that, and you do it." The reason why because I suspect it that it is there, is that there that was space. a certain amount, I think. Mm. of transfer of de uh, development rights that happened as part okay. of the, so that's the big planned piece you unit don't know. development. Right, so but the, you don't know that. Well, it's probably written into the conditions uh, that the mm. planning board established when they granted the special permit. And so that's legally enforceable. So somebody's just got to pull that if off the If that's exactly how they signed off on it, they could have Well, they could have just waved them through, but I don't think right. so. Hmm. The person who was the developer was David Clem of Lime oh. Properties at the time. And Is David still around? He lives in New... Well, actually, he sold his property in New Hampshire. I think he's living in Houston or Florida oh, or something so like that. he's not local. Not anymore. He's a former city... He was a city council, one-term oh, city council. Yes, David. I remember the name. Um, and, you know, loves diners, too, by the way. I, <laughs> I like David. Um, but the thing is, he believed in that. He really saw having that performance center as an integral part of the whole This is way before the talk was. about the foundry building. And Long before, before anybody heard of foundry. the foundry building is going to have some kind of... Right, so I guess yeah. the city could sort of take the yeah. big view and say, well, maybe we're, we're yeah. creating that. But the truth is, is that the, based upon, you know, in comparison to the grand performance center that was supposed to happen, Constellation Center was not going to be like a, you know, off-the-wall cinema. This was going to be serious. So, and the performance center that they'll have as part of the foundry building, which, by the way, I saw some nice cut-ups of where yeah. that's going to the other day as part of parking day. Yeah. The people down at Kendall Square, they had a whole display. They had a, they had yeah. a big mock-up of the foundry building here. You could lift that's the roof great. off and do so that. So there's a performance center there. Yeah, but the thing is, it's not the, nearly of the scale. Well, what would have been the scale of the other one? Oh, God, like, like a Boston Opera or something. It would oh, have been... come on. Then where, then where are the cars parked? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I just think... Cars? Why? See, How can you even but, speak but, of cars? But this is Cambridge. But, but, right, but Ms. in this Davis? past 20 years... How dare years, you? Cars whatever, are evil, don't you know that? It's been so developed over there that I think that's almost unrealistic to have something like the Boston Opera House. Well, maybe. Maybe. Something small. Well, I like on small the other venues, hand, not more than 250 On the other people. hand, the lot, you could dig down, put a garage underneath for that, and then build up. So, but the, so maybe there's some If sense. it was only going to be that, but now it isn't only going to be that. Right. That's the issue. So here's, here's what I think should be. Oh, okay. For those of you who are not listening to me, <laughs> hear me out, right? You may want to give Biomed a little more height, a little more everything here in exchange for some kind of building at least some piece of what was promised. Hmm. And then we will all be made whole, right? That's, that, that's how it could happen. So, Maybe. Uh, and I think if there are already conditions and strings attached to the property, well, that would be interesting. To that's see. a good place to begin. Yeah, so so I, that's why I, I love this order. It was from Councillors Kelly and Toomey. Yeah. And it was exactly on spot. You know, the, just, just let's let's find out where we start this conversation. So this goes to the city manager. Yep. Come okay. back. Give us the information. Uh, you know, it may be as simple as just calling up the planning board and go, "Here it is. Here's the file. Done." It could be that. Uh, there may be other restrictions, but mm -hmm. I just think so. I, to me, that was a that was a good. So, piece is of the thing. nonprofit foundation out of it completely now? They, have, they, they don't the answer to anything. It's all the, the they, buyer now. 
Well, except for the fact that they are listed as a foundation and even on their website, it says click here to donate to them. So they present themselves. And I, and I by the way, I want no, to be really No, but I'm just saying, clear. are they out of it in terms of anything to do with that property? Yeah, Glenn and Company, the, 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 right, the folks so. who are doing this, I think, are good people. But the thing is, is they present themselves as a charitable organization. And you can't, well, as a charitable organization, if indeed you are like a 501c3 or whatever, just make money and you from made 50.5 yeah. million bucks um, minus whatever other costs or, or, yeah, or that if the city starts to? or tries to pull back some taxes yeah. from you, whatever you, your net is, um, if you are a nonprofit, you can't just, you know, invest that in pork bellies, right? No, but they can invest it in their foundation work. What's wrong with that? But their foundation work is specifically performance spaces and whatever. In general it is? That's it. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Now they could change, I suppose. But oh. the thing is, is that I just think they're hmm. good people. So, you know, if we're going to be talking about an arts overlay district for Central Square, mm -hmm. and if Biomed is going to be doing something down there, I say let's keep open a conversation with Constellation Center Foundation. Mm -hmm. They've got some resources from this. They have an obligation to use it. Give them a place to use it. Help them out. If you know? if that's well, they not they, they can't just do. sort of put it in a mattress, and so but you don't know what they're doing. They could be building somewhere else. That's true. They could build a performance center in Houston, Texas. It's yeah. absolutely true. But yeah, the thing so is, is, I don't know enough about them and their mission to right. know. Well, their why. office is East Cambridge, so the thing is, is uh, I just think there's an opportunity there. And I hope that our elected officials don't screw it well, up. Well, it's I mean, a lot of money. The, the so, people with Biomed yeah. are totally reasonable people. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the folks with the Constellation Foundation, they, they, their intentions, were, I think, were good. Well, I'll be curious and to see a report on Everybody exactly loves to talk right. about arts yeah. and, and you know, preservation of arts and space and whatever in Cambridge. So there's something, there's a conversation that could lead to something good. But it good. just sounds so, like it took too long to get to this. You know, and that is sort of I think suspect. Maybe in the end, the seems people like they who, waited to get maybe the, right the good price. intentions were not yeah. matched by sufficient expertise right. to make somebody good wasn't thing watching the ball but if you partner up with people who know how to make things happen maybe things will happen if yeah you know? right. and that would be a really nice addition to kendall square or if they want to do it hey come come talk to us in central square too but well, the thing is this where are you going to put a, a big opera house well maybe here? you can't put a big opera house but the thing is maybe you could support the central, central square, square theater yay center. well or the cultural center yeah. You know, people talk about artist space and whatever, you know, so right, well, there are things that could space. be done okay. and it would be consistent with the mission. They could have bought right? the EMF building. So keep but talking, folks. All right. Make good things happen. Yeah. So anyway, um, th but there was nothing the city council could do other than say, yeah, yeah, okay, pass it. And well, go I'd like get, to see get the information. That's, that's no, I think it would be good. Yeah. yeah. Another item that was made subject to the charter right at the previous meeting was a committee report. Um, that was from a, a, I think it was, which committee was it? It was, um, there were several committee reports. Transportation, I think. Yeah. Is the one that would have to do with residential permit fees. Oh, the, the, uh, parking fee. Parking yeah. fee, right. So mm -hmm. every year it used to be, what well, it used to be like eight bucks. Or was oh, it a long time early? ago. It was five, four or five bucks and it was eight no, bucks. No, it was eight that I remember. And yeah. then it was. I confuse the cost sometimes with the cost of getting your car inspected, which used to be pretty cheap. And then they ramped oh, it up. Oh, yeah. Even though for those of us who drive a 40-year-old vehicle who've huh. been exempt from all of the requirements. You are? Yeah. Well, well I mean, other, other, than, other than basic safety requirements. Oh, okay. So basically all the emission standards, whatever, they just press the button and go. Oh, that's you interesting. Know? Okay. So that, but I still have to pay the same price. Even though basically they're looking, going, you're okay, get out of here. Your headlights work, good. See ya, bye. Well, headlights, horn? blinkers, you got a horn, horn, good. yeah, like, good. Right. But emissions, yeah, they're going to give you some uh, great. This, yeah, I get nothing. No, and, it's nothing. Yeah. I got no emissions standards at all. Right. I mean, I don't want to have a polluting car, right? So I try and keep it as tuned as it's. Well, I you can. never drive, so that. But it's a 1979 you know. vehicle, so hey, that's where it goes. But anyway, uh, as everybody knows, and soon you'll be part of the lineup, I suppose. Starting November 1st of every year. November 1st? That's the first day you can get oh, your sticker. It, you have it till January 31st. Year. And, it, and, it, and it works all the way through yeah. the following calendar year. And you can and, mail it in if you've done January. it previously. So it's not right. that onerous. That's true. So I, I always do it by mail. Yeah. And um, But the thing is, is that it's always a comedy uh, to go there in January. Because like, oh, yeah. your, your, your year permit mm -hmm. Still carries over for a little grace period yes, into January. A month. Yeah. 
So as you get close to January 31st, the, cause everybody I live, that didn't realize it starts. Well, I live down the yeah. street from oh, City right. Hall you Annex, which is where yeah. you go for the permits. And the, right. you know, it's just comedy. It you is. go by there and you see the line I know. coming, you know, like they have tellers at every window. Uh -huh. The lines are coming out. It wraps up the stairs, goes up yeah. to the atrium. Sometimes it goes right out the door. It's crazy. And just people, because they fall, I forgot, I forgot, you know, so Anyway, so I think it was Councilor Zondervan was floating the notion. First off, saying that well, the fees, the it's now what twenty five bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a senior, you don't pay anything. Right. So I guess so. Uh, depending on how you define you senior, donation. pretty soon I won't I be paying anything. I think it's sixty five. I think. Yeah. All right. So I'm still paying it. Yeah. All right. But the thing is, is uh, um, uh, the question is, is should you? Now, the thing is, the fees... Should you what, pay? Well, no, no, I'm not saying you shouldn't pay. But the thing is, is that, so it's a, it'll, 25 now, it's being proposed to go to either 35 or $40 per yeah. year. That's not going to break me, but the thing is, it's, it's an annoying thing to pay more. So, uh, so the, and the, under state law, it's a fee, so it has to be used only to support the program. But part of the program is having all those tellers and whatever to support the issuance of the, the um, stickers themselves. So one person is actually Gary Mello, hmm. you know, who's sometimes a little wacky, but the thing is, is that he said something pretty smart here. He said, why don't you, when you get your new car, or in my case, you buy your old car, um, you pay a one-time higher fee. Well, what would a one-time fee be for a car if you keep 10 years? See, so, I, I don't agree with that. I agree with keeping maybe the same sticker and just doing something by mail. Well, well, I, I don't but know. why not just basically say, look, it's first off, no, the city is not the the, the 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 fiscal stability of the city or its parking it's traffic part is not this. dependent on this anyway. No, this is sort of a courtesy, it's an acknowledgement of the fact you're a resident, you have a motor vehicle, right? So to me, how about um, you know, and what Gary's suggestion was is I think more or less was, so when you when you get a when you first get a sticker, you pay, let's just make up a number and say fifty bucks, and then you put it on your car. And for as long as you own a car and you stay in the city, then you just park. It's it. Uh, why do you have to renew it every year? Okay, so it would have to be at least 50. Right, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, and it's a one-time well, thing. Well, for me, <laughs> you know, I keep my car. My, I've been you would still need p people come and years. go in the city. So they do right. they pay $50? So you pay, and then when you move out. What if you, you know, only are here for your, two your years? Your sticker's so no I guess longer that, any good. Okay, that would equal that. Right. All right, I, I sort of get that. Yeah. But would it be, would there be some... And if you buy a new car, you well, get Well, I know, that happened to me too, yeah. yeah, yeah. You can't transfer it, but... Um, right, so, so it just seems to me like that's uh, a pretty simple solution um, that would be, you know, a good thing. So, but now I think, hmm. but, you know, there's an interesting piece of rhetoric that you get whenever they talk about talk you know, so whether it's Councilor Zonovan or Deborah or whatever, it's sort of like, well, we need to discourage people from driving, so but we it, should be increasing the rates for the residents. Yeah, I think that's fee. more the issue, is that well, they make but, it so easy to have a car. But the thing is, is look, yeah, if you increase it five cars. bucks, ten bucks here, it's not gonna make you're just going to take five or ten bucks from somebody. You're not going to... The, 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 the disincentive associated with that is so... You would have to make it $400 or something. In which case, I would yeah. never vote for you. No, right. <laughs> right, and not but, because I can afford also, it. But also, I mean, I, I, I could just... see them raising it to 35. And, you know, this whole thing about means test and all that, I'm sorry, I, I disagree with that. I agree. If you have a car, if you have a car, it costs money to put gas in it. So, it costs two, right. three dollars a gallon. Right. So you're telling me that $35 a year If is they too wanted much? to have kind of a more I, simplified I just, um, yeah. uh, procedure where somebody is empowered to waive the fee right okay. so you don't do a means test you right. don't have or to just, bring in your income what well, would be like statements. an abatement thing for taxes no because that is specific you have to say okay here what's your age what's your this what's your that and okay then, are you eligible but that's not, or not? but still it's a one-time procedure right. right but the thing is is to me turning it uh. into something where you have to you know uh put people through some onerous process as opposed to waiving the fee because of some because I, I listen, I actually believe in yeah. empowering administrative people, giving them some authority to grant exceptions. But on what grounds? Well, you'd have to give them a kind of a list of you know you ask people yeah. the right questions, and then okay, okay, fine, Mrs. Jones, we'll let it go, right? Um, I have no problem with that. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just, um, of all the things we have to deal with and with the, you know, Boeing, right, this but, and but that, creating, that's one issue. But if I'm they, sorry, if, I just don't So if, if they were to have yeah. pursued this matter, and for, yeah. they, would, they would probably debate, like, well, yeah. what should be the criteria for the means test? Right. Well, should the council vote on this? And, that and that's going to take more favor. people and more work than, it's crazy. Right? Let's just say it ain't happening because no, that won't happen. it was put to a vote. Oh, right. Where the, the order that was contained in the committee yeah. report, and it got three votes in favor, four votes opposed, and two absent. The two who were absent were Councillors Simmons mm. and Toomey, who mm. I can assure you would have voted. Uh, actually, come think of it, it was actually four votes for it, three votes against, but the two who were absent, had they been there, would have voted against. So it didn't have a majority, it needed five votes. But even if it was full attendance, it wasn't going to get the five votes. So it's done. So All there'll right? be no increase? No increase, other than, unless there was already one previously scheduled, well, would, and I believe it's okay. not. They've already basically printed up the materials and right. with the fee schedule, so don't worry I about it. I like the idea, though, now that I'm thinking about the one-time thing, and that is not yeah. a hardship. I think, yeah, um, I think these yeah. are things they should revisit. Actually, yeah. it was Councillor Kelly who... Honestly, Councillor Kelly is the, seems to be the idea generator in the body these days. Mm -hmm. And Councillor Kelly also suggests, you know, said something really radical, like which is, you know, we, we get our annual sticker is because we're used to getting annual stickers. Mm -hmm. We move our cars for street cleaning every, in my case, every second mm -hmm. Tuesday and Wednesday because we're used to it. Mm -hmm. But is it actually always necessary? To move the car? Well, it okay. is because you're going to get towed, right. right? But in places like Somerville, they'll ticket you, but they won't necessarily tow you, mm. right? So the question maybe, so should it be mandatory towing? Okay, so you're talking about forget permits and just... No, 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 that's oh. an unrelated okay, issue. So... But the point is, is that we, we, we totally accept the straight cleaning, no parking on the outside of the street, yeah, yeah. you'd be tagged and towed. We yeah. accept it because we are, it's music to our Canterbridgean ears. <laughs> We've been hearing it for so yeah. many so, so decades. So what's the point here? I don't get it. Well, the point is, is that um, should we? Is it actually worth doing that? Right. The street cleaning. I mean, I remember oh, oh, hearing. Oh, instead of just. I mean, I, I like the fact that if there's some car that's sort of a derelict car, when they do the street cleaning, they tow it away. It's gone, and I've seen that happen sometimes. Um, certainly, there are times a year, like the first flush, basically the first year that there's a lot of grime from the winter. I look forward to street cleaning. Right. I well, the, to the towing people get money. So maybe that's So are we doing issue. this basically yeah. just to fund, you know, Phil's Dick's tow? Dick's towing or Pat's yeah, towing. Pat's or tow, right. Is, yeah. So, um, you know, I don't know that we should be necessarily supporting that. So to me... You still get a ticket. Right. But the, the first street cleaning is in April. Mm. That should be absolutely mandatory towing because there's a lot of crap on the street, right? Mm -hmm. But and you should learn. If you were told you once, should learn, you should right. never bark again. But as the year progresses, yeah. do you really yeah. need to do it? True. Is it so important when, Good point. you know, during July So in July other words, we could be August saving a lot of hassle. Just, just hassle, so you can yeah. ticket them or something like that. But, um, but yes, let it slide, right? Uh, but then for the, you know, after the leaves have fallen, you definitely want to yeah. make sure you get all those leaves out of there. So the lighter ones should also be mandatory. Okay. So anyway, so that was, that was suggested, but, you know doesn't go anywhere it seems but it could be okay. it could be discussed further you know right so then they'd have to change the recording move your car no parking on the odd side of the street or you'll be tagged oh i hate that yeah but not necessarily towed uh, well, that'd be funny <laughs> right yeah. unless it's april right, right. or december so. And then everybody will be upset because it's like changing the lyrics of a song, right? Yeah, right. So, anyway. That's funny. So, anyway, so that was something that, that we brought up last night, but it didn't go anywhere, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the things that I noticed, uh, this is sort of a minor point, because there's, I think, about four live zoning petitions right now. Oh, right, The, yeah. the brown petition's gone uh, for good, but there was one having to do with accessory dwelling units. One has to do with um, ca still on the cannabis. Table? Yes, well, I was going to mention that one. Right. It was the, the flat roof rainwater one. Yeah, that and one I know about. Something else, I think. Yeah. Or maybe there's only three, I forget. Mm. But it, it was a, I was thinking about it earlier today. I said, okay, so there was a, a council order came in. It was a council petition to do some further amendments to the uh, regulations involving so called accessory units, mm -hmm. which was really the Barrett petition from yeah, a few I years ago. Yeah, I thought that was settled. 
Well, that, it's, that's the law right now. So there was an order came in, I think Councilor Carlone even signed on to it, uh -huh. um, doing some modifications. Now, there was some, we don't need to get into all the specific modifications, but you know, um, you know, the things like uh, you could only have one accessory unit per lot. I don't know that it says that in the existing law. Um, could you allow a garage to be an accessory. Uh, accessory unit under the current law that was not included? So they want to maybe say mm. maybe you should, right? But here's the rule is that, so that came in, I think in, remember, was it June, June 25th? I don't know. And the uh, council is obliged to have an ordinance committee within 65 days. It never happened. Hmm. At least I don't think it happened. I, I don't even remember that on the... Right, so it didn't happen. So they, so did the council decide? Never mind, or did did somebody forget? Or did, so or may, or where did, does it stand then? I don't understand. As far as I'm concerned, it's just going to die a natural death and expire without anything being done. But but I thought it's allowed. No, the thing is, the existing law under the Barrett petition is is is, oh. is, is it stands. Okay, but the thing so is this is something. But, but if I wanted to, let's say I had a, a, a garage. So it's my, the garage thing that is. Yeah, and I wanted to turn okay. into a studio apartment, right? A, you know, in-law apartment. Right mm -hmm. now, you couldn't do it. All so right. should you be able to? Should have been at least a hearing, for goodness' sake. So you think they just forgot they, about they it? They punted. They just, you know. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why. They were all maybe they were all worked up about the cannabis zoning with a brown petition for climate safety. So whose responsibility forgot. is it to we only have a, to go to the get the ordinance that back. committee should have scheduled the hearing. Okay. And they didn't. So it's gonna just die. I oh think. I see, because it's yeah. gotta die. Unless they actually it's yeah. already maybe they could just rush it and sort of you know, I think they all could right. Well they if could anyone's watching it. this, maybe they could figure that anyway, out. Anyway. Plenty of other stuff happening. Bowtie so, ride. Oh, Bicycle Sunday. ride is this Sunday. Just go to Sunday. Robert's civic calendar. You'll see it all. A lot of fun Where stuff happening in good okay, old city. Okay, see you next Cambridge. week. See you later on Cambridge Inside Out.